Good morning, friends of St. Peter's, and welcome. It's a little different scene today for our service. I thought I would pray with you in my study instead of in the church, uh, given present circumstances in the church, it being taken by some people who need to be in there for prayer. But it's lovely to be able to pray with you this early Tuesday morning, and we are celebrating the life and ministry, even as we acknowledge the martyrdom of Polycarp of Smyrna. I hope you'll click the link in the description of this video so you can download the bulletin and join me as we make this prayer together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. And why don't you pray this with me? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the maker of heaven and earth, you gave your venerable servant, the holy and gentle Polycarp, the boldness to confess Jesus Christ as King and Savior, and the steadfastness to die for his faith. Give us grace following his example to share the cup of Christ and to rise to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. This first reading is from the book of Revelation. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these are the words of the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear that you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested and for 10 days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. The word of the Lord. And rather appropriately, Psalm 121. Please pray this with me. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. And this is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to him, declare these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, we are able. He said to them, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. Now, when the 10 heard of it, they were angry with the two brothers, but Jesus called to them and to him, hmm, called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. 
the gospel of the Lord. So Polycarp of Smyrna was martyred. The 23rd of February is his feast day in the year 156. He was Bishop of Smyrna, today known as Izmir, a city on the west coast of Turkey. The letters to the seven churches in Asia at the beginning of the book of Revelation, which we heard this morning, include a letter to the church in Smyrna, identifying it as a church undergoing persecution. Polycarp is said to have known the Apostle John and to have been instructed by him in the Christian faith. Polycarp in his turn was known to Irenaeus, who later became Bishop of Lyon in what is now France. We have several sources about Polycarp. One is Irenaeus's brief memoir of Polycarp. The second is a letter of Polycarp uh, to Polycarp from Ignatius of Antioch, written in about 115 AD, when Ignatius was passing through Turkey, being set in chains to Rome to be put to death. And third, a letter from Polycarp to the church at Philippi written at the same time. And four, an account of the arrest, trial, conviction, and martyrdom of Polycarp written after his death by one or more members of his congregation. Polycarp was denounced to the government, arrested, and tried on the charge of being a Christian. When the proconsul urged him to save his life by cursing Christ, he replied, 86 years I have served him, and he never did me any wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? The magistrate was reluctant to kill a gentle old man, but he had no choice. He was sentenced to be burned. As he waited for the fire to be lighted, he prayed, Lord God Almighty, Father of your blessed and beloved child, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received knowledge of you, God of angels and hosts and all creation, and of the whole race of the upright who live in your presence, I bless you that you have thought me worthy of this day and hour to be numbered among the martyrs and share in the cup of Christ for resurrection to eternal life, for soul and body in the incorruptibility of the Holy Spirit. Among them may I be accepted before you today as a rich and acceptable sacrifice, just as you, the faithful and true God, have prepared and foreshown and brought about. For this reason and for all things, I praise you, I bless you, I glorify you through the eternal heavenly high priest, Jesus Christ, your beloved child, through whom be glory to you with him and the Holy Spirit now and for the ages to come, amen. The fire was then lit and shortly thereafter, a soldier stabbed Polycarp to death by order of the magistrate. His friends gave his remains honorable burial and wrote an account of his death to other churches. Indeed, a man of faith, a man of gentleness, a man who could somehow, at the time of his own death, find blessing and offer himself as a sacrifice to God. An experience it is highly unlikely any of us will have in the most literal way that Polycarp departed this life as a sacrifice, as a martyr. But I do wonder sometimes about those times when we are challenged to make a sacrifice for our faith. And do we see those opportunities of sacrifice as a blessing and an opportunity to praise God, to uh, lift up our hearts in the name of God and God's glory and God's love and God's beloved child, Jesus Christ? Or do we find these times that we're called to sacrifice an inconvenience, a discomfort, a challenge to the way we like to look at the world or the way we like to understand things? And so resist, perhaps refuse the sacrifice. Because sacrifices can come in physical things like sacrificing resources for the sake of God's work in the world. But we can also sacrifice the way we look at the world. If we have become very comfortable in this world, if we have shielded ourselves from injustices that others are enduring, there is a sacrifice to be made 
by letting our eyes be opened. Can we offer that sacrifice to God for the transformation of our souls and perhaps for the world? What other kinds of sacrifices might we be called to make? I hope you'll pray about this this week and let me know what God has to say to you through the power of God's spirit in your prayer. What kind of sacrifices have you been called on to make and to give and to be on your journey of faith? And at the time, were you able to acknowledge the sacrifice and, and see an opportunity to praise God? Or did that awareness come later? Sometimes that happens. We see these opportunities for grace in the midst of sacrifice, uh, perhaps through the rear view mirror. It's okay, so long as that realization comes, yes? And we have a chance to lift up our hearts in gratitude to God for God's presence with us in those moments, in those times, and how they showed us something important about God and the way God works in the world, our relationship with God and our opportunities to be a witness to the transformative power of God's love. Amen. Indeed, let us bring our hearts together in prayer using the prayers of the people you'll find on page three of the bulletin linked here or on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And I invite you to place your prayers in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube that we may pray with you. And together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us conclude our time this morning with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you on this day and always. Amen. Until next time, bye-bye. Thanks for being here.